Now, leadership is undoubtedly a very big challenge in Africa. Every successful nation or organization needs a competent and purposeful leadership that is capable of turning potential into real economic and political power. Let's zero in now as we discuss Nigeria and the leadership crisis. Joining us is a lawyer and strategic leadership expert, Toye Sobande. Toye, welcome to Newsday. Thank you. Okay, good so. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon to you too. So I guess we get to pick your brain and uh, maybe first off ask you, what's your go-to when it comes to inspiring leadership teams and uh, workforce in an organization? Um, often, um, leaders use the same method, trying to evaluate uh, the performance of the staff and uh, try to create compensatory uh, or provide compensation in a way to see how they can motivate the employees. But that's, that's not the key to inspiration. The key to that is giving people a sense of purpose. Beyond just earning salary, taking a paycheck home, people want to be part of something where they can find significance in, where the, their sense of identity thrives, where they evolve, they become the person they want to become. So I always tell leaders that um, the most important gift you can give to anyone is to help them find a platform of expression where they become the best of themselves. And that's just the key to inspiration. And it's just not also to inspire them to want to be accountable, to do the job as, um, uh, to the best of their knowledge, but also to think of how they add value, to see it from the angle that whatever you do, whatever task you, uh, you have on hand is to add value. And adding value is what gives you significance, is what gives you the fulfillment you want. Um, because essentially, when you lead people, uh, you must understand that you are also modeling something for them. And what you're modeling for them is uh, for them to also aspire, you being their role model, to become at that same, to get to that same level where you're in as their leader, or probably to even do better. So what leaders do is they provide that navigational tool for people to not only discover themselves, discover their own gift, put it to use, give it to the benefit of uh, humanity or to other people around them, and by so doing, they will find their own significance in life. Well, Toya, glad to see your face quite glad a while. Glad to see you too. As I'm really doing. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And now you talk about navigation. Yes. Uh, your lifelong passion is to transform the face of the African race okay. with the use of these navigational tools for maximizing resources. Mm. Talk to us about these navigational tools and how far you are or otherwise towards achieving this dream. I'll give you an example before you answer. Oh, yeah. Ngozi Okonjo Iwala was described by a paper as this 66-year-old grandmother, you know, instead of pointing out her qualities. Go ahead, Toy. Mm. I didn't get that last statement you made about the 66, the, the example you wanted to give. You know, you were talking about transforming Africa, okay. giving it a face. The, the fr I heard that bit, the first bit, really, I mentioned it earlier, is the sense of purpose. You know that part of um, the holy book that says, uh, without the vision, people cast off restraints, uh, people go wild. Everyone needs a sense of purpose, a sense of direction. When people don't have a sense of direction, when they don't know where they're going to, you see chaos. And that's what we see in our society today. Every, it just becomes like a jungle. Everybody does as they like. Everybody just uh, creates an initiative without uh, conforming or, to the law or conforming to the standards that puts into conditions others. So when a person who leads an organization, a society, or a community does not have a sense of direction, you will mislead people. You won't be providing leadership. The best you do there is to provide rulership. And that's what we see largely in our society. The solution to that is everyone who aspires to leadership position must understand that leadership is not a position on its own. It's not something you aspire to. It's a sense of responsibility. That's how I define leadership. Leadership is not just influence. It's taking responsibility for the life of people. If I am the um, CEO of a company, I know I'm responsible for people's salary, people's welfare. So I will do the best to market and sell my product, develop all the necessary strategies that I need to uh, get income in, just to ensure that I meet with my own part of the contract for my employees. I also expect them to meet with their own part. So when it comes to governance in the society, that sense of purpose is the number one navigational tool for transforming anybody's life. 
if I if I walk up to you and I give you a promise for tomorrow, I must show you what tomorrow looks like. So every day you wake up in the morning, you want to go to work, you are aspiring to what tomorrow looks like. You, know, you are looking at five years from now, 20 years from now. That sense of purpose inspires anyone. It's just like somebody who enters into a university for the first time and he's studying law. He wants to become a lawyer. His whole aspiration is one day he's going to wear that wig and gown and he's going to be pronounced as barrister this and not only this and all of that. That's exactly what we are talking about here. Indeed, and I, li and I like the fact that you've brought it to practical terms and governance in society. Uh, and so I'm wondering, is this purely a leadership crisis or are the followers complicit as well? Uh, should we be looking at structures and systems and not individuals so we can build strong institutions yes. and not strong men? Yes, you're correct. You're very correct. Um, you, you highlighted three things that I could identify. Those in governance and those who are following uh, the governance structure and the institutions. Now, people always assume one person gets into power, the Nigeria will be transformed. And that's the mistake we've been making over the years. When we go to the polls every year, we are hoping on wanting to elect just one person. And what we aspire to achieve is that that one person will come like a messiah and it will transform everything. And that's the biggest lie that we've been sold. No one can transform and change Nigeria from its current leadership crisis in one tenor. No president, no governor can achieve that. It cannot happen even in two tenors. No political party can achieve that. The foundation starts with the value system of our country, which is where we bet our sense of identity from. The question is, what are the values that the Nigerian mind espouses today and lives by? We talk about the American dream. What is the Nigerian dream? Those dreams or that we, you see the Americans talk about or they, they, they make noise about is simple, but everybody knows it. But here, when you look into our society, when you look into everything, we put the blame on the government. Everybody says the government, if somebody cannot impregnate his wife, it's the government's fault. But that's not true. The, there's a part where the followers have a role to play. Simple, obey the law, pay your taxes. Don't throw trash on the floor. Be honest, say the truth, show integrity, be kind, be considerate to others. Those are part of things that makes up leadership. Now, if somebody is the head of a home who speaks brashly to his wife, he pulls his wife down, is abusive towards his wife, and your child, your son is watching you as a man do that to your wife, you have taught that child how to be a leader and how to be a man. So that child thinks that is the way men should treat women berate women, talk down on them, he takes that orientation to his school, and that's the way he relates with his classmates in school. He takes that orientation from school, he takes it to the society, and that's the reflection of the society we have. He takes that same experience, that same exposure to the workplace. He gets to the workplace, he becomes a bully. Now imagine that person, that, that person I just described, now getting to politics, getting to governors, who has grown under an abusive leadership structure all his life. He's going to see everybody as being, he's been a special person and everybody under him. He's going to be very abusive. He's going to be a bully. And we must understand that it's the family values that we entrench to our people right from the young age that they take into the school, to the society, and they take into governor. So if you see a governor who tells lies, he was apparently trained in a home where lies was permitted, where there was no integrity, no honesty. And he takes that to the workplace, the way people run their business. You fail to pay your salaries, the salary of your staff on time. You don't compensate your, salary, your, your, your staff adequately. You fail to encourage, to inspire them. When you run for office as a business owner, that's the same way you will run our political structure. And that's exactly what we have, what we have in our society. People who have never run a business successfully have found themselves in politics as an opportunity to solve their poverty problems who do not have the skill set of leading their home, leading their wives and their kids, found themselves in politics, and we are complaining that we don't have leaders. We shouldn't be complaining. The question is, what is the standard and the criteria to which we select leadership? Do we have a standard criteria beyond just the party name, beyond the fact that I like this party, or this man is my kinsman, this person is from my state? What is the standard for appointing a leader exactly. in Nigeria? Exactly. That, that's a crucial question. Thank you so much, Toye, leadership expert and lawyer, for beginning that discussion.